welcome to ABC 31 News Tonight. I'm Scott Beadle. This afternoon, two of Fort Polk's finest were honored as the Soldier and Non-Commissioned Officer of the Year. ABC 31's Char Thomas has our top story tonight. Nine of Fort Polk soldiers competed for Soldier of the Year, but only two could receive the honor of being Soldier of the Year and Non-Commissioned Officer of the Year. After exceedingly excelling through a week of physical and mental challenges, Specialist Garrett Hayes, a medic, and Non-Commissioned Officer Corporal Stevens Huffstutter, an engineer, exemplifies soldiers that are well-trained and equipped to do it all with hard work which is why they are the newest soldier and non-commissioned officer of the year. That is not where you're stationed or what unit you're with that really defines you as an individual soldier. It, it, it really is your own personal responsibility to make sure that you're ready. Uh, readiness is as much as a unit responsibility as it is an individual responsibility, whether that's physically, mentally, tactically, and how well trained you are, but it really is your own personal drive to make sure that you are the best of the best and to make sure that you are on top of your own needs and your own responsibilities. Um, so being an engineer it's kind of has its perks because you know you get to do weapons and you also have experience with demo and constructing things so it, you get a little bit more creative I feel like being an engineer. In Fort Polk, Char Thomas, ABC 31 News. The Rotary Club of Alexandria installed new board members today at their weekly meeting. Among the new board members was KLAX TV's own John LaBeouf as the president-elect for the 2018 to 2019 Rotary year. He'll succeed Mike Johnson, who will serve as Rotary Club president for the 2017-2018 term. Four inmates face charges in connection with a fight in the Rapids Parish Detention Center 3. Detectives say the victim was another inmate who required hospital treatment for severe injuries. 23-year-old Kentrell Richards of Alexandria 35-year-old Adrian Lamar Logan of Woodworth and 34-year-old David Ray Terran Taylor and 23-year-old Rashid O'Shea Williams, both of Alexandria, are all charged with battery, conspiracy, and obstruction of justice. Deputies say they were all in the same cell block. Two men have been arrested in connection with the theft of a boat and fishing equipment from the Saline Lake area. 23-year-old Christopher Allen Bozeman and 18-year-old Hayden Reese Graham are charged with theft. Alexandria police arrested a Pineville man after he fell asleep in a stolen vehicle and admitted to being on heroin. 31-year-old Jamie Bates is charged with theft. Police say that car was stopped on Lower 3rd for more than an hour on Saturday night. Alexandria police arrested a man on a motorcycle reporting he resisted arrest and had a knife clipped to his pocket. 31-year-old Ricky Carriker of Alexandria was arrested Friday morning on Navajo Trail. Police say they also found drugs on him. And Alexandria police arrested a man for a fourth offense DWI after he allegedly caused a car accident. 46-year-old Jose Martinez of Vall is also charged with hit and run, running red lights, and no license. No injuries were reported at the accident, which happened Saturday afternoon at Coliseum and Windermere. Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards has signed into law a controversial bill which adds the name of the late Jimmy Long to the Louisiana school. Many alumni of the boarding school for gifted children opposed that bill saying it interferes with the efforts to brand the school. The formal name is now the Jimmy Long Senior at Louisiana School for Math, Science, and the Arts. Proponents of the bill, including Long's brother, say it will still be known as the Louisiana School. A compromise amendment to the bill gives the school's board the authority to decide how to change signage. Long, a retired state representative, was largely responsible for the creation of the school. Well, there is some good news for current and incoming LSUA students. ABC 31's Joanna Phillips has the story. LSU of Alexandria registered its first students in the year 1960. Over 50 years later, LSUA has earned national recognition. They're ranked among the top 10 schools in the nation for the least amount of debt gained upon graduation, according to U.S. News. And for the first time in 10 years, LSUA's tuition will not increase for the upcoming academic year. It just goes to keeping the cost down where um, if, we, if we're not increasing the tuition fees, then that's, that's, not, that's not an additional financial burden that students are having to, to, um, to worry about covering or coming up with extra funds to, to cover any increase in tuition and fees. It's going to be fully funded for us, LSUA, that's going to be $2,447 uh, per semester. Um, and again, that covers the full tuition 
uh, for the students and doesn't, doesn't cover the fees, but it does cover the full tuition for the students. It was also announced earlier this week that TOPS would be fully funded. That would be really beneficial for me um, as far as getting books and being able to purchase um, all my books on time for class. Um, and it's also going to help as far as getting my tuition paid um, and everything for the fall semester. There's still time to contact the admissions department and make plans to attend this fall. LSUA is close to home but far from ordinary. I would know because it's my alma mater. Joanna Phillips, ABC 31 News. Time now to see what's happening with our weather. Meteorologist Ross Whitley is here with a first look. Yeah, temperatures once again below average for the day today, not too far off from where we should be. We topped out at 87 degrees, normal for this time of year at 92 degrees. An overnight low last night right around 70 degrees. The heat and the humidity, well, they're back as far as the humidity goes. Our dew points are very, very muggy out there. We have dew points as high as 73, 74 across the state. And it's only going to get worse as we go throughout the rest of the week. And so are our rain chances as we head into Thursday and Friday. Of course, I'll have all the details on that and more on the weather coming up just a little bit. All right, thank you, Ross. New Yano is turning 100 years old and the city is celebrating with a huge event. We have an arts and crafts show June 30th and July 1st from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. with a fireworks display at 9 p.m. on Saturday. For more information, you can contact the town at 337-239-0889. Louisiana farmers are emerging from nearly two weeks of wet weather. For some crops, that rain had little effect, but one crop has been hampered by it. LSU Ag Center correspondent Craig Gotro has our story. Finally, blue skies emerged over this cornfield in central Louisiana. A rainy start to June virtually ground work in the fields to a halt, but the weather hasn't hurt Louisiana's corn crop, according to Dan Frommy, the LSU Ag Center corn and cotton specialist. Things are looking very, very promising. Uh, some of the farmers are you know, already talking about this could be the best corn crop uh, that they've ever, ever had. Frommy credits an early start to corn planting and favorable weather early in the growing season as reasons for the crop's success. The early planting means an early harvest for the crop, which may mean completing the harvest before the peak of hurricane season. We might see some of the combines, uh, you know, rolling in the field around the, uh, you know, the middle of July uh, versus, you know, uh, August 1st. So uh, we're, we're off to a good start and we looks like we're going to have an early harvest as well. Cotton planting also got off to an early start. Some cotton was planted near the end of March, but frequent rains in April caused the planting to stop and injured some of the early planted cotton. Seems like every time we got the cotton out of the ground, uh, we received, uh, you know, too much rain, especially, you know, if cotton just coming out of the ground. So we've had some replanting. Louisiana farmers did plant more acres of cotton this year than the past few years, but Frommy does not believe it will meet some early projections of nearly 200,000 acres. Driving across the state now, I think we're going to be, it's probably going to be more around 160, 170,000, which is still about 35,000 acres more than uh, the 2016 crop. Another crop seeing its footprint across the state decrease is grain sorghum. Problems with the sugarcane aphid discourage many growers from planting it. With the LSU Ag Center, this is Craig Gotro reporting. Frommy estimates this year's corn crop will total about 420,000 acres, which is about 100,000 acres fewer than last year. Enter to win a carport from Quality Outdoor Products in Leesville. An $800 value in the color of your choice, plus option to upgrade to something bigger at Quality Outdoor Products. To enter, register online, on Facebook or Twitter. Enter daily to increase your chances of winning. This carport could be yours from KLAX TV and Quality Outdoor Products in Leesville. See official rules at KLAXTV.com. The Jews throwing a summer party like no other. Oh! With crowd-pleasing cocktails. Show-stopping sides. Oh, yes, ladies and gentlemen. Perfectly smoked meatloaf. And all-American desserts. Sweet. All part of our ultimate throwback special. I'm going to love it even more. The Jews' best backyard barbecue in history. Here's Saturday at 5.30 on KLAX TV. Brought to you by Town & Country Meats. The best meat you'll ever eat. Hi, meteorologist Ross Whitley got your current satellite and radar up there and 
Well, most of the rain is off to our south at the current moment. We did see a couple showers earlier today and even a thunderstorm that passed off to our east. But all of this action kind of along a stalled frontal boundary to our south and it's a warm front, although you really can't tell out there because it is so humid with our dew points well up into the 70s all across the state. Yesterday we were in the lower 60s and it felt actually fairly nice out there, but today it's back and it's going to stick with us. This uh, front will try to inch northward as we get into the day tomorrow, which will increase our chances of seeing some rain. But right now it is 85 degrees, partly sunny out there. Check out this dew point. Well, it was 70, but we're sitting at 69 right now, feeling like 87 degrees out there. The winds out of the east southeast about 13 miles per hour. And overnight tonight, we could see an isolated storm. I think most of the rain will continue to stay off to our south. Temperatures going to drop down to around 67, 68 degrees, depending on your location. As we go through our day planner for tomorrow, most of the day staying dry and not too bad. It will be humid once again, but starting out at 67 degrees, going to the noon hour about 83, 84 degrees. And then as we get into the afternoon, we'll see the temperatures staying the same, topping out around 87, but plenty of thunderstorm chances out there. And these are going to be some slow movers with a lot of moisture in the air, so we could see some very heavy rainfall out of any of these storms. So, of course, with any thunderstorm, flash flooding is a concern, and we'll monitor that as we go throughout the day tomorrow. And that is our first headline. Storms in the afternoon tomorrow. Very heavy rain is possible with those storms. Thursday and Friday are our best chances of rain, so even though we have a good chance tomorrow, Thursday and Friday, we actually have about a 60 to 70 percent chance of storms in the afternoon and then going into the weekend looks like we'll have plenty of sunshine but with that sunshine our temperatures warm back up our surface map for tomorrow that wind coming out of the south a little stalled frontal boundary just along basically where alexandria points south and that's going to allow for those thunderstorms to pop up and just kind of train east to west as we go throughout the day southwest staying very hot and luckily, no humidity, but things are changing for them as we go into the future. Looking at your forecast lows across the immediate vicinity, temperatures right around 67, 68 degrees, but a 30% chance of an isolated storm. And for tomorrow, temperatures topping out 87 to 90, depending on how much sunshine you see earlier in the day from Bunky all the way up to Oak Grove, but a 50% chance of storms. And your seven day, yeah, lots of little lightning bolts in there from Wednesday to Friday, but mostly sunny through Saturday and Sunday and even Monday might be even pleasant with some lower humidity. Then it returns as we get into the middle part of next week. Temperatures staying right near 90 degrees. That's a look at your weather, Scott. All right, thank you, Ross. Could your cosmetics be a threat to your health? With more, here's Kenneth Moten. From hair conditioner to toothpaste to lip balm, they are products we use every day for personal hygiene and for our appearance. What may surprise you? These products are sometimes linked to adverse effects like skin irritation or hair loss. How often these events occur has been a mystery, which is why researchers at Northwestern University wanted to look into how often the users of these products and their doctors logged adverse event reports with the FDA. Looking at data from 2004 to 2016, they found a total of more than 5,100 such reports, an average of nearly 400 per year. Hair care products, a primary culprit, and the rate of these reports on the rise, more than doubling between 2015 and 2016. While there is no proof that all of the adverse events were a direct result of exposure to cosmetics, the report suggests that more oversight may be needed when it comes to those bottles in your beauty kit. With this Medical Minute, I'm Emily Rao. ABC 31 KLAX, the exclusive provider of ABC programming in Central Louisiana. We are the only station where you can watch new, first-run ABC programs like Dancing with the Stars. Designated to go strike the enemy. Gray's Anatomy. Gray's can deliver. Damn right. Hi, I'm Michael Bailey. Call me at the number on the screen. See how easy and affordable television advertising can be.
A monster catch from the deep blue sea for TSA agents at Boston's Logan International Airport. Yeah, this 20-pound lobster was discovered in a passenger's luggage on Saturday. Officials say it was in a cooler, alive, and cooperated with the screening process before heading to its, well, final destination. Thanks for watching, and have a great night. Only one doctor brings health right to your home. Dr. Oz. Every day is a new chance for change, and everyone can start right now. With all new ways to feel encouraged, inspired, hopeful, confident, proud, positive, special, feel better every day. Make an appointment with Dr. Oz. Check in for your daily checkup. Dr. Oz, airing weekdays at 11 on KLAX TV. Crime Watch Daily airs weekdays at 3 on KLAX-TV.